Welcome to Kitchen Maid. Smooth orange creme brulee. For me, it's one of my favourite all-time desserts. Simple, smooth and sophisticated. Yet surprisingly simple to make. Creme brulee for dessert. It's beautiful. It's sweet. It's irritatingly perfect. And this is how I make my irritatingly perfect orange creme brulee. First of all, you're going to need a kitchen and an apron. Take one non-treated orange, you know, the ones that weren't sprayed with dangerous pesticides. Then, using a microplane, grate the whole orange zest into a clean pot, avoiding the white bitter stuff. Cut the orange in half and then squeeze out the two halves, the juice from this orange, and set it aside. Pour in 25 centilitres of whole milk, you know, the tasty fatty stuff and then head straight over to the stove. Spark up the gas and get the milk, zest and vanilla seed to a boil. Oh shit, I forgot the vanilla. No worries, luckily I had one in my back pocket. Okay, split the pod in two, not all the way through, and you're gonna scrape out those uh, tasty parts, that's where they live, in the centre, they're the seeds. Don't throw the pod away, I'll show you what you can do with that later. Before I forget, I'm gonna dump straight away these seeds into the milk, then jingle it around a bit to mix well. Oh, I almost forgot, a pinch of salt to reinforce all those beautiful flavors. As soon as the milk comes to the boil, kill the flames straight away. And then add two tablespoons of your fresh reserved orange juice. To this, I like to add about two tablespoons of Grand Marnier a beautiful French orange liqueur, which is rich and sweet at the same time. And if you haven't got this, no worries. You can always substitute two tablespoons of fresh orange juice. And finally, you can add about 35 centiliters of heavyish cream. You know, the 100% full cholesterol stuff. Now bring the cream mixture just back to and boil. Then cut the flame and put the lid on so all those beautiful flavors can infuse for about 10 minutes. While the cream's infusing, we're gonna put about five egg yolks into a clean bowl. To this, we're going to add about 40 grams of white granulated sugar, plus a 7.5 gram sachet of vanilla sugar. Oh, that reminds me, quickly, I wanna show you what you can do with that leftover vanilla pod. Yeah, you guessed it, we're gonna make our own vanilla sugar. It's dead easy to do. I'm just going to get myself a nice, clean, airtight glass container of any size or shape you like. Make sure the container is perfectly dry, except if you enjoy chipping out vanilla sugar from a jar. Your choice. Oops, what a mess. Fill the container almost to the top with granulated white sugar, especially if you're planning on closing the lid. Now, just fold up your pod and put it in so it goes inside. Go on, get in. I think it's still alive. OK, seal it up it can't escape. Let the sugar infuse for at least a week before using. This will keep for several months in a cupboard. And there you have it, homemade vanilla sugar. You'll never have to buy it again. Okay, let us go back to our egg, sugar and vanilla sugar mixture. Start whisking up vigorously for about a minute until all the ingredients are thick and creamy. So how do I know when to stop? Well, in general, when you feel that your arm is about to fly off, you know it's ready. It should look something like this, a bit creamy. And to this, we will add our hottish, warmish, infused milk and cream mixture. You can filter out the orange zest if you want, but I leave them in for extra flavor. Have you noticed that I'm adding the milk really slowly? Keep whisking because yeah, you guessed it. Hot milk and egg yolks make scrambled eggs. Do you like sweet scrambled eggs? If you can, try to get hold of these classic creme brulee ramkins. They're about an inch deep and about four and a half inches wide. And what's so good about that is that you get the perfect crust cream ratio in every bite. This is a creme caramel mold. I find it far too deep for a creme brulee. You can use it, but don't fill it up right to the top. All you have to do now is carefully fill up the three molds with the cream mixture. Oh, in case you're wondering why there's only three moulds, it's quite simply because there's only three of us. If there's more of you, you can quite easily triple or double the quantity. They keep quite easily in the fridge for up to three or four days. Make sure your oven is preheated to 230 degrees Fahrenheit for about 10 minutes or 110 degrees Celsius. Okay, when your oven's hot, put your brulees in for about 45 minutes to an hour. 
After about 40 minutes, we're going to come back and we're going to start checking them. Don't worry, they can sometimes take up to an hour, an hour and 15 minutes to cook. OK, I'm just checking them. It's about 45 minutes. Look, you can see they're not quite done, but they're getting there. They're going to go back for another 10 minutes. OK, 10 minutes later, I'm going to pull them. They're done. Et voilà. You can see how nice they are. Look, they're wobbling, they're shiny, and they're not sticking. Now for the final test, the wobble test. Can you see that? Some parts of my body can do that. OK, I've let them cool down for about half an hour. Now we're going to put them in the fridge to finally set. Oh, by the way, look at how good they stack up these creme brulee pots. That's what they've been designed for. OK, just throw them in the fridge for at least two hours, or overnight ideally, so that they can really firm up. Now, to make the sugar crust, you're going to need a torch. I've got a cool brulee torch, but you could use a DIY torch. That's what most restaurants use. You're also going to need some sugar. I'm using a fine granulated brown sugar, which is great, but you could also use white sugar. That works just as well. Now, lightly sprinkle about a tablespoon or so of the sugar evenly over the brulee. You don't want it too thick, otherwise you will have a hard time getting it brown. When you've done that, what you have to do then is just give it a little tap so that you can evenly distribute it and get rid of the excess by shaking it back in. Whoops, what another fine mess I've made again. OK, now we've got a thin, even coating of sugar. Now let's burn it up now. Oh, I forgot to mention, never put the sugar on in advance. Always do it just before you want to serve it. If you don't do that, the moisture from the cream will absorb into the sugar and you'll never burn it correctly. Notice that I'm using the tip of the flame and I'm starting very gently from the exterior, not holding it in one position for too long. Then gradually work yourself all around so that it all becomes a very even golden brown colour. So once you're done, all you have to do is just let the brulee cool down for a few minutes so that it can become crusty before serving. And after two minutes, that's real crusty. Mmm, the contrast of the ultra thin, crunchy golden crust, contrasted by the smooth, rich vanilla cream and then awakened by the spiky notes of tangy orange makes this dessert so irritatingly perfect. I think I'm going on a diet after watching this.